starts with the 45 record, yeah. slowly spinning, mm -hmm. and you can hear the lyrics from Australia yeah. Crawl, and then Fine. it blends into... I call a member for Manly. Thank you, Speaker. The past 24 years, uh, Mr. Speaker, my commute from Manly has been by ferry. In fact, I caught it here this morning. Um, the, the swell was all right. Um, and let there be no mistake, the, the Freshwater Ferry is an icon of Sydney Harbour. The number of customers ranges from around 30 first thing in the morning at 6 a.m. to around 280 at its busiest time at 8 a.m. on a 1,000 person vessel. But those concerns, Speaker, are, of course, no reason to retire all of the beautiful old boats. It would seem there is a possible partnership, uh, a possible opportunity for interested organisations to retain the freshwater ferries at this Museum of Sydney Harbour and it would be a, a peer to fit for purpose. We are presented the opportunity to explore the electrification of ferries which is an exciting and timely development which I wholeheartedly support on their behalf. And I also reiterate my call to Transport for New South Wales to assist the Council where possible. Speaker, the freshwater class ferries are an icon of Sydney Harbour. That's right. The compromise of retaining two of them will of course not please everybody. But year round, for years to come, they will remain on Sydney Harbour. Quickly, let's learn a little bit about the economical impact that the Manly Ferry plays on Manly and the Northern Beaches. Uh, the, the Northern Beaches Council has discovered that there's $500 million worth of tourism dollars flowing into the Northern Beaches every single year. Catching the fresh water was the fourth top most cited activity for things to do behind going to the beach and eating. So pretty essential. There was 2.8 million visitors to Manly during 2019. That's up from 16% the year before. In 2020, 52% of visitors used the Manly Ferry to get to Manly. Visitor spending accounted for 12% of all of the jobs created on the northern beaches. So this is an economy that relies on tourism. Where does the tourism come from? The ferry. And now let's learn a little bit about the economical impact that the ferries play on the Sydney CBD, along with the families and the corporates who take that ferry to the CBD every day in order to provide for their families who live on those northern beaches. So we tracked down an expert who works for one of Australia's largest commercial real estate companies and we're here in the CBD of Sydney. <laughs> get her expert advice on some of those numbers of the people coming from the northern beaches into the Sydney CBD. Hey, do that. Um, roughly around 6% and like I said that would not include those employees going to our North Sydney office. So 6% of our population is actually quite a big, a, a large amount of, of people coming from the northern beaches into the CBD. to Dave and I say, how in the hell are we going to make a documentary about the Manly Ferry interesting enough for people to enjoy it? And then that's when he handed me his phone and proceeded to tell me about an 80s hit rock song with the words Manly Ferry in the lyrics. Australia's biggest ever band's Australian Crawl. Smash hit records, sold out tours, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And literally at that moment, we both knew what we needed to do. We had to track down the band.
So we went to uh, the power station in New York and uh, I mixed it there with the engineer was Neil Dorsman who is a friend of Mark Knopfler's and Mark just lived around the corner so we borrowed Mark's Music Man because miking up acoustics was in its infancy back then. Um, I ended up just playing using a Strat and turning the volume down to five and getting a clean sound. We looked at the Manly Hydraulics Laboratory and found there were 15 occasions when the swell was above 4.5 metres, yet the ferry was only cancelled six times. This will result in more cancellations, a worse service for your community. I can't believe as the local member you'd endorse it. It's time to reverse the decision and save the iconic Manly Ferry, Mr Speaker. Don't be so reckless. revolutionizing ro Australian rock and roll, being on the world stage, but more within Sydney, Australia, within Melbourne, what was the vibe like? What was the feeling like? What do you remember most and what do you miss the most about those times in the early 80s? It was a really creative time. There are plenty of outlets like Countdown. Um, as I said before, you could gig two or three times a day if you wanted to do it sometimes. Here's a few stats that may surprise you. $500 million annually is contributed to the northern beaches due to tourism. And of the total workforce, 12% is related strictly to tourism, proving that the ferry service doesn't only provide security and reliability to the locals, it also serves as a lifeline to the out-of-towners who visit Sydney and rely on it for transportation. 83. Okay. Just If I say 1983 and in relation to the music you were making at the time, what comes to mind? You know, it's kind of hard for me to fit everything I, that I did in the 80s into the 80s. But I did do it because I was there. Uh, in 83, I think, that was when we went to tour England with Duran Duran. And that was also when we recorded uh, Semantics, which was an, an EP, four songs for Australia. but. Um, a whole LP for the rest of the world. How about if I read you some lyrics? Something that comes to mind. I see the others reading standing as the manly ferry cuts its way to circular key. James was a great lyricist. And talk to us about that. How do the lyrics about the manly ferry find their way into an iconic band like your band, Australian Crawl, and that song Reckless? What was the connection with you guys in Sydney? And was that a lyric that had significance or did it just pop up in there? Classical, that, that solo you're referencing, the one you got in, is a Spanish sounding guitar, correct? Yeah, it's a classical guitar. Yeah. Was that agreed upon by everyone? Because that sound in that song is very different from the rest of the heartbeat of that song. I feel it makes the song. It, adding that contrast. That's what I thought. Of that, was but everyone agreed that that was going to be the case or did you have to fight to add that in? James hated it. He wanted to replace it with a screaming electric guitar. And, I, um... and what was the sentiment of the fans? Everyone seemed to like it. Ooh. 